Hello, I'm Brian Lesur, President of Xenix Software. In this short video, I'm going to provide an overview on how to build an automated test in Essential Test. Tests are built in Essential Test using a process that we call step based. It's a critical feature of Essential Test because it not only speeds up the process of building tests, but it also significantly reduces the cost of maintaining them over time so that they're always ready to use when you need them. The first step in the process is to build a unit that we call a step. A step is made up of actions. An example of an action is putting text to a text field or selecting an item from a drop-down list. Actions are grouped into steps which are completely reusable. So if in the future the target application changes, you only need to change the step that is affected by that change. All of the tests that use that step are automatically updated. Let's start by building a step. I've already provided a name and description for the step. You'll see in a moment how we're going to use the snapshot located in the right to help us build the step through drag and drop. Notice the set of radio buttons below the snapshot. Those buttons allow us to select the type of action to be generated. The user can choose from set, verify, get, event, or other. You'll notice that there are already some steps created in this project. They're located on the left in the Project Explorer. As I hover my mouse over the names of the steps, you can see the description display as a tooltip. Before I start to drag and drop object actions to build my step, I want to show you a special feature for list type fields like list box, radio list, and pop-up list, like the state field that contains the state abbreviations. Notice that when I click the button, New Restricted String, Essential Test automatically captures the values of the state field and stores them in a new type called State String. You'll see how the new type is used later when we start providing test data to this sample test. This step is going to fill out the information request form that is depicted in the snapshot on the right. To generate the actions for this step, I'll make sure the Set Radio button is selected. Then I'll start to drag and drop the fields to which I want to set a value. I can drag them one at a time, or I can hold down the Control key and click on each field so that I can drag them over as a group. Since I also want to click the button to submit the form, I'll select an event called Navigate and drag the field over to the step. If this step was only going to be used once, I could put the data directly into the fields that were generated for each action. But since I want this to be a reusable step, I'm going to generate parameters. Essential Test will generate a parameter automatically in the correct type for each field. Since most of the fields on this form are text fields, most of the parameters will be of type string, but the checkbox fields will be given a Boolean parameter, and the state field will be associated with the new state string type that we created a few minutes ago to store the state abbreviations. Now that we have learned how to create a step, let's build a test. I've already provided a name and a description for this sample test. The process of building a test is quick and easy. All I have to do is drag over the steps from the Project Explorer to my test. Notice how the parameter fields for the steps are displayed along with the name of the step. I could put the data directly into those fields but I want this to be a data-driven test. So instead, I'll click on the Data button and select Bind Data Table. Essential Test builds the data table automatically based on the parameters of the steps. 
All I have to do is provide a data table name. Before we look at some of the features of the data table, let's take a quick look back at the test to see how a central test bound the test to the data table and associated each one of the parameter fields with a column in the data table. I've blasted some data into the data table so that I can point out a few features. Notice that the data fields associated with checkboxes in the target application are displayed in the table as Boolean fields where the user can either check or uncheck the box or pick true or false. For list-based fields like radio lists and pop-up lists, a central test provides pick lists. Those lists not only make it easier to input data, but they also prevent data input errors that could easily cause an automated test to fail because of invalid data. So far, we've built a reusable test from a set of automated steps, and we've input our test data. Let's associate that reusable test with a test plan. This is an outline-based test plan, so we can take advantage of the inheritance that's built into its structure. Watch how I drag the test that we just created and drop it on the test plan. Notice the green T, which indicates that the test is an automated test. That T would be blue if it were a manual test. I dropped it on a test plan node that has several child nodes because this is a data-driven test that will be used to test several requirements detailed in the test plan. This set of tests verifies that if a required field is left blank on the web form, the web application will respond with a message that reminds the user to provide a value for the field. It's easy to associate each test requirement in the test plan with a row in the data table. I'll click on the table icon in the test tab located below the plan and then I simply double click on the row header for the row that I want to select. That's all there is to creating an automated test in Essential Test. As you can see, we've eliminated the requirement for frameworks or coding and we've increased your productivity by making everything reusable. I want to take a step back now and show you some additional features of the step builder. So far, we have only created set and event type actions. Essential Test also provides a way to generate verification points. Watch how I verify whether a button is enabled. I'll select the Verify Radio button. Then, I'll choose the attribute of the button that I want to verify. In this case, I want to verify the enabled state. Next, I'll drag the object over to the step to generate the action. Essential Test also makes it easy to add iterative and conditional statements to a step. Watch how I drag an if statement to my step from the Actions Explorer. I'll use the Step Builder to complete the conditional statement. I only want to execute actions against the form if the page exists. I'll select Wait Until Exists, which returns true if the page exists. Any actions dragged subsequently will only be executed conditionally if the page exists. The Actions Explorer also provides access to an extensive library of functions and classes. For example, if I want to execute SQL against my application database, I can drag over a Connect action. Essential Test provides a field to provide a Connect string. Then, I'll drag over the Execute and Fetch actions. Likewise, if I want to read from a text file, I can drag over an open action where I can provide the path to the file. Then I can drag over the read action. Let's look at one more feature before I conclude this topic. Interacting with tables can be very difficult with most automated testing tools. 
Essential Test provides a feature that we call a selector to make it easy. If I want to check a checkbox in a row in a table, I can use a selector to easily locate the row. In the Step Builder, located below the snapshot image, I'll select the Message ID field, which is what I named the column of checkboxes. I want to check the checkbox, so I'll set the value to true. Then I'll access the selector field and input a value that will allow Essential Test to locate the right row at runtime. I'm going to put in the name Seshi to find my table row. Using a value over an index is a big advantage. In this case, I'm testing an email application. If I identified the row by index, that index would not be valid after I received another email, whereas the string will be valid even if the row is no longer in view. Essential Test will scroll the row into view before the checkbox is checked. I hope that you found this short video on Essential Test's automated testing features informative. If you would like to learn more, please visit us at www.xenix.com.